Okay, please God. Praise God. Welcome, church, to Bible study. Apologies for the late start. We're in the book of John, chapter 8. for the late start I had some technical difficulties again I had it on only me going live and I should have had it on public anybody on Facebook so forgive me if you were punctual and uh, my technical difficulties amen loving father we thank you for your tender mercies and your grace we thank you for your word we thank you for this Bible study in this time oh God to break the bread of life Oh God, and give you glory, honor, and praise. We ask that you would open our ears and our hearts to receive your word that we may apply it to our lives day in and day out. In Jesus Christ's wonderful name, giving you all the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. 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 Praise God. John chapter 8, um, 14 is where we're at. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. So Jesus bearing record of himself, being a witness of himself, of who he is. The first, the first witness to Jesus, a man on earth, about him bearing record of, my, of himself, is himself. He says, for I know whence I came. They didn't know. And whether I go. They don't know where he's going or coming or going. But you cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. You can't tell which way I'm coming or going. So Jesus can testify about himself, okay, and not they, because Jesus had and has a view of eternity. He has a view of eternity. He says, I know where I came from and where I am going. 8.15, he says, you judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, okay, I'm saying if I do judge, he's saying, my judgment is true. It's exact, it's true. For I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me, he says. He says, I'm not alone in this uh, while I'm here on earth. And you may think I'm alone, amen. And guess what? And we're not alone. Christ said uh, he's going to send a comforter when he leaves. And he did. You have the Holy Ghost say, man, he's going to not leave you abandoned here on earth to deal with the wiles of the enemy. Amen. So Jesus was settled in his identity. Jesus was secure in his identity. Jesus was satisfied, okay, about who he was. Amen. And the second was witness to Jesus Christ, amen, which they uh, weren't really to receive was the heavenly Father, God the Father, the second witness to Jesus Christ. 817. It is also written in your law. And he tells them, it's written, this is written in your law. This is written in something that you probably should have picked up and read, that the testimony of two men is true. Amen. I am, I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. So there, Jesus said he bears witness of himself. Then Jesus uh, 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 says the Father bears witness of him. Amen. 
verse 19. Then said they unto him, where is thy father? They're curious, and that could be a sarcastic question. Jesus answered, ye neither know me nor my father. So, you know, Christ is right before them, and Christ said, you don't know me, but you're wondering where my father is at. And he says, if ye had known me, okay, and I'm right before you, if ye had known me, you should have known my father also. So Jesus knows his father, and the Pharisees did not, and they asked about that. And they said to him, where is thy father? The Pharisees probably uh, uh, intended for that to be a type of an insult or to cut him, so to speak. You don't, you're, you, you don't have a dad. You don't have a mom. People will do that. Uh, they are the way they are because they don't have uh, their father in their life or their mom in their life. Um, who knows what the intent was? Were they really genuine about asking, where is his father? These words, verse 820, chapter 8, verse 20, these words spake Jesus in the treasury, okay, as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his for his hour was not yet come. Now the writer says, no man's laid hand on him with the impression, okay, that they wanted to lay hands on him. And John reminds us that Jesus had this debate and had this discussion and this discourse with his opponents in the most public place, okay, in Jerusalem, okay, right in the temple there. Still, no one laid hands on him for his hour was, had not yet come. So that we can say, uh, to our enemy that you can't lay hands on me because it's not my time yet. Amen. Uh, 821. Then said Jesus again unto them. You know, again, the Bible says, again, repetition that happened to me today at work. This guy, he was explaining, this person was explaining something to me. First time I ever met him. And I was trying to understand what he was talking about. Some of the language was foreign, meaning that what he was describing it was about uh, elevators. I don't work on elevators. I work on computers. And he was explaining the elevator and what he needs from me for this technology wise for this thing to work. And I was trying to get it. And I said, OK, uh, uh, explain that again. And then he raised his voice and he started to get a little irritated with me and I could feel it. And I just had to just keep on going because I couldn't let that bother me. And so here, though, Jesus is not getting irritated. He's just being patient and teaching them. He said, then Jesus said again unto them, I go my way and ye shall seek me. He said, you're going to seek me and shall die in your sins. Where I go, ye cannot come. So now that was pretty rough there. It was fine up until, you know, it, just to picture this, you're in that crowd and, and God help us. You're one of the Pharisees or one of the Jewish leaders. And uh, he says, uh, and ye shall die. He tells you that you're going to die in your sins. That's going to bother you. That's going to bother you. That's going to put you in a place where we're like, hey, well, I need you to stay here and explain that to me. I need you to uh, 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 comfort me or show me some type of way out. I just can't receive that and go about my business. And uh, it's, it's intriguing how people in can sit in church and you know, the preacher can preach about them going to hell and they just be fine with it and go out the door and left the way they came. God help us. And Christ says, whether I go, ye can not come. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? They didn't even, they didn't even acknowledge the sinful parties. Why didn't they say, Hey, you said I was going to die in my sins. You said I was going to die. Instead they say, will he kill himself? Because he saith, whether I go, ye cannot come. They go to the very worst. Now, this was like another insult. First it was, where's your father? Now it's, are you going to kill yourself? Because you're saying you're going someplace that we can't go. And the only thing they could think is death, right? This was another insult against Jesus, it seems like. The Jews, uh, you know, of Jesus' time taught that the lowest levels of Hades, right, hell, were for those who committed suicide. It's like, this guy is going to commit suicide, basically, they're saying. And he said unto them, ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. 
I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So three times he tells them that they're going to die in their sins. Jesus speaks of two different destinies here. Jesus will go to glory, okay, and them, okay, on their present course, they will go to hell, dying in their sins. He speaks of two destinies here, and he speaks of theirs three different times in the last two, three verses there about them dying in their sins there. And people are born in sin. In uh, Psalm 51, 5, it says, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So if we hold to our sin, and which some people do, they hold on to their sin, and they do not deal with it, then guess what? You're going to die in your sins. There's no two ways about it. It says, and all sin, all sin, does not matter, has to be dealt with. All of it has to be dealt with. Those who die in their sins, okay, will have to pay for their sins in hell. But if you have your sins dealt with now, you can be freed up from those sins and be on the other side of death, on the good side of death by trusting in whom? Jesus Christ. Sin needs to be dealt with. There's no two ways about it. And Jesus was trying to get them to deal with that. If you say something to somebody three times, you're trying to get them to deal with that certain thing specifically. And they should have picked up on it. Instead, they would just flip it and say, "Is he going? where is he going? Is he going to kill himself? They just bypassed and did not acknowledge their sin that Christ was telling them that they were in. Verse 25, then said they unto him, who art thou? Where's thy father? Right? Okay, is he going to go kill himself? Now it's, who are you? Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I told you before, you know, this was a question that Jesus had already answered. Jesus told them again and again who he was. And usually when a person asks a question, it's because they want to discover the truth. They want to discover the answer. And when they uh, uh, get the answer, sometimes they may not want to receive the answer given to them. So questions are about uh, should yield some type of discovery when you read your word. OK, you should ask the Lord questions about what you are reading. God, what do you want me to know here? What is the word saying here? Am I missing something here? You know, it's like you're raising your hand to the Lord, okay, about the word that you're reading, his word that you're reading, because guess what? You are discovering and getting to know him and you want to know him. But they resisted the truth and refused to believe the truth as Christ was telling them this. And so we let's not follow that same path. And, and the questions are somewhat, they could be a little hostile. They could be from the religious leaders here. They could be unfriendly. The questions they were asking Christ could be argumentative questions. Where's thy father in John 8, 19? As if he was lost. Where's your father? As if Christ is lost. And the next question they ask, will he kill himself in John 8, 22? As if he was suicidal. And then, who are you in John 8, 25? As if he did not know who he was. Amen. <laughs> it's like it, argumentative questions, just deflections by putting it back on Christ's plate and Christ trying to get them to see the sins that they were in. 8, 26. I have many things to say. Here's what Christ says. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. So Christ is saying, I have many things to say of, and I have many things to say and judge of you. Christ is saying there, I could easily expose you before all the people right now. I can easily expose your pride. I can easily expose your hypocrisy. I can easily expose your hatred, okay, and your malice against the truth. And guess what? For those that are in the closet, 
uh, Christians that are in the closet about their sin, God can easily expose us. Amen. So we need to get right. We need to get right and give it to him right now. You know, we see that happen all the time where a, a person is uh, at a church and they're doing things and then they get a following and they see, you know, their sin is right there on the stage. And the enemy waits for that. The enemy says, yeah, give them a bigger platform so I can expose their sin in front of everybody and shut them down. Deal with your sin issues now if you have any at all. John 8, 27. They understand not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. I'm working with somebody, that somebody that me and them, uh, we are in cooperation about what's going on here. And he says, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. Oh, gosh, they want to know. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. And that's we should we should follow that right there. We should always know that we're not left alone. The Heavenly Father has not left us alone. And we should be trying to do things that what? That please him, no matter who opposes us. And the lifting up here that Jesus talks about, he says, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then ye shall know that I am He. The lifting up Jesus describes here, it had nothing to do with uh, exaltation or Jesus, you know, uh, with a celebrity status or applause. Okay, so in Jesus' day, crucifixion, being lifted up, he's talking about, considered was to be very vile, and evil, and brutal, and shameful. And people really spoke of it directly. Instead, they would just uh, use various metaphors like Christ did, such as being lifted up. And this is particularly a common reference for Jesus. He talks about, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw men unto me, who often speaks of how the Messiah, Jesus himself, must be lifted up in order to accomplish, guess what? The Father's mission. I do nothing of myself. John 8, 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. He's speaking to this group that believed on him. If you continue in my word, Jesus says, in my word, if you continue there. So there's already a group believing on him, already in his word, already believing him, already trusting him, already following him. And he says it's conditional. But if you continue, you have to stay there. You have to endure. You have to linger. You have to remain. You have to carry on in my word. Question to you out there online. Are you carrying on in God's word? Okay. Are you carrying on in God's word? Are you continuing in God's word? Are you lingering in God's word? Are you like residue on the counter after you made a meal in God's word? Are you like, you know, how that, how that stain get there? And, you know, in God's word, always there. Stay there, linger there. Be there, remain there, stand in his word. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. Oh, let me go back, 832. And ye shall know that, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's what Christ says. And that's the result of abiding in the word of the Lord. That's the results of abiding in the word of the Lord, freedom, freedom, freedom. And it comes with abiding in his word. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. Now, this really is perplexing here because uh, it says we're never and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free. The reaction of the religious leaders should have been, how can I be made free? Tell us about being made 
free. You know, you have the gospel, you have the good news, you have Jesus Christ right there, and you're talking about we're in bondage to no men. So they already thought they were free in some capacity, okay? Instead, they do the unthinkable. They protest. We're not in bondage to anybody. They object. Nothing's wrong with me. I'm saved. I'm filled totally. And we get like that sometimes, right? And they complain and they gripe and they dispute what Christ is saying. They should investigate. Like I said, the questions will lead you to the discovery of the answers that you need for your souls, your congregation, your family, your church, strangers, okay? Keep discovering the word of God. Don't contest the word of God. Discover the word of God. Ask questions. What, who, when, why, where, how did this take place? Who was there? Discover the word of God. We have to. And they were right there before his eyes, Jesus Christ. They were right there. They had a front row seat to the show. And they didn't get it. Too busy worried about not having enough butter on their popcorn. John 8, 34. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, truly, truly, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And they're like, oh gosh, now he's on this sin thing again. And the servant abided, you know, if I hear the preacher say that in church and he keeps on talking about sin, I'm going to start checking myself. I'm going to start saying, oh, God, are you, what's going on here? Is, is, do I got some hidden sin? And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If the son, okay, I know that ye are Abraham's seed. He said, I'm not going to be confused about this. I know you're Abraham's seed. I know you're Abraham's seed. I understand that. I get that. But you seek to kill me. Let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about one good thing. I know you're Abraham's seed. They're probably applauded in their hearts. Yeah, yeah, he, he's agreeing with that. He's not disputing that. He says, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. They let his word fall to the ground. They want to kill him. He said, I speak that which I have seen with my father and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. And here he goes, he's just gonna unleash and I love it. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto him, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me. He tells him again, you are, you want to kill me. A man that hath told you the truth. You want to kill somebody who's told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Okay. Abraham's your father. You're not doing like your father, Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. Okay. We be one father, even God. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil. Oh gosh, you know, they, they, that would, that would, that would, I don't know what to say about that. If I was there, I don't know what to say about that. I'd have to really evaluate myself. It says, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, ye will do. And they wanted to kill him. He said he was a murderer. And they had they all had murder on their mind and in their heart. They wanted to kill Christ. From the beginning, he was a murderer, he says, and abode not in the truth, and live not in the truth. Okay, so we know folks that are not living in the truth. Guess what? We know who their father is because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie. He speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. God help us. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you can convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that, because if you don't believe him, he's saying then you believe I'm lying. My, I'm doing miracles. My father's not the devil, he's saying. There's no way. I'm doing miracles. They, my, 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 my doctrine, you don't understand it. It's foreign to you. And people believe it in me. And you got a problem with that. He that is of a God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. 
In verse 48, he says, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast the devil? Here we go. Now they flip it. You have the devil. You're a Samaritan. You have the devil. Jesus answered, I have not a devil. Let's not get confused about that. Okay? But I honor my father and ye dishonor me. So if you dishonor Christ, you dishonor the father. You dishonor the Holy Spirit. And I seek not mine own glory. Okay, we know that for a fact because he gave himself on the cross for our sins. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Amen. Praise God. Are we keeping his saying? Are we keeping his word? And he's trying to convey to them, hey, if you keep my saying and keep my word, amen, you have eternal life. 52. They said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast the devil. Abraham is dead and the prophets. And thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Look how they define death, tasting it. Like as if it was tangible as you drinking a soda or eating a sandwich. Lord, whew. art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead and the prophets are dead? Who makest thou thyself? Well, you already said, who's my father? You know, you already said, uh, am I going to kill myself? You already said, who am, I, who am I? So you don't know who I am. So you need to find out who I am. And I'm telling you who I am. Jesus answered, I honor myself. My honor is nothing. He said, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honors me, of whom ye say that he is your God. So they're saying, he Christ saying to them, hey, you say that you're God, okay, which is my father, Okay, he honors me, but they're, claim, they're claiming that, guess what? That Jesus Christ, the Father, is their God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. He calls him a liar right there. But I know him and keep his saying. You know, you... If that was to happen today, if you were to say that to certain folks today or people today, call them a liar, tell them their father's the devil, they'd leave church, they'd run off. Um, some may contend with you, it all depends. Uh, but Christ, would, he had no sugar on this. He was just telling it like it is. And sometimes I, I had a person tell me, like a family member tell me like it was one time, and it, and it shook me and it woke me up. It really did. It really did. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not fifty yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him. Anger was fueled. You know, how they get, they must of kept stones in the temple because they were in the temple. So if they took up stones, all right, you read that. They didn't say he left. They said he was by the treasury in the temple. Then they took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. See, he went out of the temple. So they had stones in the temple. My goodness, brutal, ready to go out in the temple through the midst of them and so passed by. So Christ gets out of there. They got stones in the temple, ready to stone Christ in the temple. They didn't care about the house of the Lord or the blood being shed there or, or, or spilled there at all. They didn't believe about the father or who he was. So guess what? A lot of folks are not going to believe you when you try to promote and introduce the gospel to them. They're going to resist. They're going to fight. They're going to deflect. They're going to come up with these things. Well, who is God? Have you seen God? How come you haven't seen God? Why do I need God? They're going to just like the, the, the Pharisees and the Jews here. And no, I have my own God. A person shared a story with me. Uh, uh, my, they had told my wife that a, per, a preacher went to visit this lady at her uh, uh, house. Uh, they went over there. The couple went over there to visit this lady and share the gospel with her. And they were talking to her and they were telling her about God. And the lady lived on a mountainside or had this nice house and had a view of this mountain. And she opened up 
the sliding glass window. She had a big old sliding glass window, pulled the curtain back and told the preacher and his wife said, this is my God here. And she was talking about the mountain and the view that she had and the scenery that she had. She said that that was her God. We have to get right church. We have to get back to the place where God can turn this nation around and this globe around, amen, and heal this land and know God for who he is through his son, Jesus Christ, amen. I love you, God bless you. Be mindful of our Bible study uh, next week at 7.30. Also, the Thursday evening service coming up in a couple of days at 7.30, amen, and Sunday morning service at 11 o'clock. Share, amen. This uh, Bible study, share it with friends, share it with family, go over it. Uh, if you want, uh, you can get a jump on next week's Bible study by reading some of John chapter 9 in the beginning there. Amen. And we'll go from there. I love you and I'll be praying for you and God bless. Talk to you soon. Thank you.